Mikrofonumuz çalışıyor mu? Evet. Tamam, çok iyi. Çok teşekkür ediyorum tanıttığınız için. Burada olduğumuz için çok mutluyuz. Özellikle İslami Coin ve Hakk'ın bu etkinliğin ana sponsoru olduğunu görmek beni çok mutlu etti. Bu çok çok önemli. Dışarıda da standlarını ziyaret ettim. Ve bu konuşmadan sonra herkesi standa da davet ediyorum. Lütfen Ahmet'in yanına gidin, kendileriyle konuşun, ekibiyle tanışın. Çok faydalanacaksınız. Bu panelin amacı başlı, öncelikle İslamik coin'i herkese anlatmak. Daha sonra İslamik finans, İslamik finanstan bahsedeceğiz. Şeriata uygun sistemden bahsedeceğiz. Bunu daha fazla anlamak istiyoruz. E, muhteşem projeniz hakkında biraz daha bilgi almak istiyoruz. O yüzden Muhammed seninle başlamak istiyorum. Lütfen kendine tanıtır mısın? Öncelikle nereden geliyorsun? Geçmişini, arka planını anlatır mısın? Öncelikle tabii ki çok teşekkür ediyorum bu güzel bir tanıtım için. Çok teşekkür ederim. Herkes hala burada oturuyor ve dinliyor. Bu gerçekten çok iyi benim için. Günün sonuna geldik ama hala herkes çok hevesli. Hiç merak etmeyin zamanınızı boşa harcamış olmayacaksınız. Ben e, bilgisayar mühendisiyim. Bilgisayar bilimleri mühendisiyim. Son senemi özellikle de bilgisayar otomasyonu, yapay zeka konusunu açtım, harcadım. Özellikle Web3, Blockchain ve kripto konularına odaklanıyorum. Ama bildiğiniz gibi çok hassas konular, çok hassas bir pazar. Ve buraya adım atmak isteyen herkesin çok doğru düşünmesi, doğru projeleri seçmesi gerekiyor. Doğru ortakları seçmesi gerekiyor. Ee, geçmişte birçok proje gördüm ve başarısız oldu. Bana ortak olmayı önerdiler. Ancak projeler ya sağlam değildi, somut değildi ya da ekip çok sağlam değildi. Ama zaman içinde... Ortaklarımla tanıştım, Andrea, Alex'le tanıştım, diğer ekip üyeleriyle tanıştım. Onlar da benimle aynı fikre sahipler. İnsanlara değer katacak bir şey yapmak istiyorlar. Etiği, etik değerleri ve değerleri kullanan bir şey yapmak istiyorlar. Dolayısıyla ne yaptık? Piyasayı inceledik. En başarılı projelerin, mesela Bitcoin'in, Bunların ortak bir yanı olduğunu fark ettik. Mesela smart contractları, akıllı kontratları kullananlar ilk bunlardı. İncelemeden sonra büyük bir boşluk olduğunu fark ettik. Bu boşluğu doldurmak için, bu ihtiyaçları gidermek için çalışmaya karar verdik. Müslüm toplu, Müslümanlar dediğim gibi 1.9 milyardan fazla sabahtan anlatmıştım. 1400 yıldan 1400 yıl önce doğmuş bir finans okuluna bağlı bir sistem içinde olabilirler. Gerçekten burada büyük bir potansiyel var. O yüzden hep birlikte İslamik coin'i ve hakkı hak blockchain'i oluşturmaya karar verdik. Bu platform sayesinde bir ekosistem oluşturacağız ve piyasaya sadece onlara fayda sağlayan bir proje değil. Aynı zamanda teknoloji getiren, insanların da hayatlarına değer katan bir şeyler sunacağız. Burada teknolojiyi göreceksiniz, şer şeriata uyumu göreceksiniz. Sürekli yeşil çevre dostu konseptleri göreceksiniz. Finansal kurumlardan e, o gelen insanlar bizim yönetim kurulumuzda, özellikle kraliyet ailesinden kişiler bizim danışman kurulumuzda, tüm bu insanlar hepsi bir araya geldiğinde bir proje için çalıştığında mükemmel oluyor. O yüzden de projemizin bir değeri var, bir amacı var. Topluluğa, topluma hizmet etmek istiyor. Bu projede çok e, nasipliydik çünkü en iyi finansman alan projelerden biriyiz. Özel satışlar sırasında 400 milyon dolardan fazla finansman aldık. Çok büyük bir miktar. Evet, kesinlikle. Bugün ben ve Andre downloadları, downloadları kontrol ediyorduk. 1 milyondan fazla indirme olmuş hak voltlar. Dolayısıyla işaretler çok güzel. Bu sadece kısaca bir de, kısaca bir girişti. 
Öncelikle etik değerleri ön plana koymak isteyen insanlar için biz böyle bir şey düşündük, böyle bir yapı yaptık. Siz büyük bir piyasa fırsatı gördünüz, analiz ettiniz piyasayı, doğru insanları buldunuz işbirliği için ve daha sonra arka planı oluşturdunuz. Sonra gördüğüm kadarıyla tabii İslamic Coin ilk başta bir fikir olarak başladı ama sonra ne yaptınız, bunu nasıl piyasaya tanıttınız? Katma değerini nasıl eklediniz? Mesela bu etik değerleri nasıl buna entegre ettiniz? Mesela şeriata uygunluğunu nasıl sağladınız? Bu önemli ve güzel bir soru. The uh, project, of course, uh, if we are not addressing the real gaps, the, the, the people will not adopt this. But look at this. The market cap of the Islamic finance is more than three trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. And the, it's expected to be 3.69 by end of this year. Mm -hmm. And then the market cap of the halal products, which are not just now limited to food, there it is already in cosmetics, in health products, in many other domains, is growing massively every year. So the market cap is four trillion dollars. We talk in total about seven trillion dollars. So there is a huge market cap. There is a huge community. There is an amazing fintech tool like the blockchain that addresses these, uh, um, I mean, principles. Uh, um, is it, it is the best match because Islamic finance talks about transparency, honesty, how the community will be always first before we think we make money or we make profit or whatever we do, we always put the community first. Mm -hmm. So this technology is the best match to that. That's why I foresee for the marketing with very minimum efforts, we got almost more than 1.7 million people now following us in all our social media. We got 1 million downloads for Hack. So there is very, very good adoption mm -hmm. connected to this. And when we talk about the Sharia part, yes. now a lot of people say this, why do we need something Sharia compliant? Why do we need something Islamic? Don't we have enough coins and enough blockchains in the market? I mean, I will refer this to just what we mentioned a few seconds ago, where you have a community that has their ethics and values and we need to serve them. If today we see, and I said this today in, in the keynote speaking, if we see the uh, non-Islamic banks and non-Islamic financial entities, they started providing providing a lot of Sharia compliant projects uh, and products, then we see that there is a huge need and demand in the market they are addressing it, although they are not Islamic banks, for example. So that's why we need to address this and serve this community. What make it, makes it halal? We already did exactly like the professional financial institutions, they will have their Sharia board. And this Sharia board will scan the project technical and business wise and will certify that this is complying with Sharia and will issue the fatwa for it. So our Sharia board is headed by Dr. Nizam Yaqubi. He's very famous in the Islamic finance and Bloomberg gave him the, the title of the gatekeeper of two trillions uh, Islamic uh, finance market and also the whole Sharia board are sitting on more than 50 banks Sharia boards or one of the well-respected Sharia boards in the world and they are not there just to do a one-time job and just give a fatwa and then after that we go and do whatever we want with the project. No, this is very genuine. They are a permanent Sharia board. We have also a mechanism to uh, look at the projects and filter them later on. Uh, my partner Andre is going to explain you. But uh, this is how it is uh, compliant with the Sharia principles that puts the community first. No interest, no uh, negative projects that reflects on the community with bad impact like casino, gambling, uh, uh, tobacco, anything that will really hurt the community uh, or impact negatively so it's not accepted and we will not work on that project. So that's what we mean when we say it is Sharia compliant and important here to focus that by saying this, we don't eliminate all the main players in the market. We don't say we are the only halal 
project and everything there is not uh, halal or don't deal with it, we never say this. We cooperate with everyone. But what we say, we have always a better and easy environment that the people and community don't need to think a lot. Is it Sharia compliant? Is it not? Is it halal? Is it not? So they have everything collected in one place so they can use it without hesitation. I, I'm, I'm torn in two, two questions. First, maybe I'm thinking, like, should we explain Islamic finance a little bit, Paula? Because, I mean, you guys live in this environment, but I think for a lot of European listeners, probably it's like, what is Islamic finance? You know, what should we explain it a little bit? Can you, because you have that, that expertise, can you just give us a little insight? Definitely. Well, I think that Mohammed pretty well summarized it so far. It's, uh, that's why um, Islamic finance is very often compared to ethical investment, right, in, in Europe. It's essentially, you know, just ethics and uh, not going into bad businesses and also just slightly different way of structuring, let's say, the, the interest, which we don't have in Islamic finance. But essentially, despite it's a niche, I think uh, Islamic finance is for everyone, for example, uh, just because you're not a Muslim, it doesn't mean that you cannot have an Islamic deposit, right? I mean, it's all about it's all about uh, the benefits you're getting out of it. The same goes with any type of tokens, products, applications. I always give an example of a very successful platform in UK. I don't know if I should say the name, but one of the first. Islamic stocks trading platforms that became so popular that um, many of the users ended up being non-Muslim. Mm -hmm. So in, ter in terms of me and how I relate to the topic, uh, my background is mainly in finance and technology. I, um, one of the things I've been doing is uh, for the last seven years I've been in Dubai uh, being a structuring notes at uh, Mashrek Bank and that time I started developing this interest for Islamic finance because I started seeing um, how big that so-called niche is, it's absolutely massive and how much the opportunity is there. And if there are, let's say, 100 products for uh, traditional customers, then you have maybe five products for, uh, for people that prefer this type of investment. And just the way of structuring gives you so much opportunity to be creative. And from there, we go to the next step, which is fintech. Uh, I have been directly involved. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of one of the first platforms that digitalized Sukuks. Mm -hmm. Not digitalized it in terms of tokenization, that is very popular these days, but more of just using the infrastructure of blockchain to, to issue Sukuks. And now I think that we come in the recent years from fintech, now we move to Web3 economy. And I'm super interested to be part even of that type of conversation. I definitely think that the, the, the next step for the space is being included in the Web3 economy with its own, with its own wallets and any, any type of offerings actually for, specifically for the sharing investors, because as Mohammed said, the, mass, the market is massive and it keeps on growing every year. So then we definitely have to get into again the Islamic coin and you can explain us, please Mohammed, like, What's the purpose of the coin? Like, why should I purchase it? How can I purchase it? So, where can I find it? And then we, Andrew, you will tell us all the technical details about that and Hack Network. Okay, so um, I'll just highlight a very uh, small part of that. I think, uh, look, we, we, we don't talk only about a coin. We talk about an ecosystem. So there is a blockchain. There is a Sharia compliance. There is a philanthropy where 10% of every minted coins goes to evergreen endowment. And first thing, by getting Islamic coin, you are contributing in this endowment that supports the project that the community are creating. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one reason. Second reason, there are a lot of people who are really attached to Islamic ethics and values and they are hesitated should I buy other coins or I should not buy other coins are they Sharia compliant or not so it's a lot of people they buy the coin as a store of value as what they do with Bitcoin or even Ethereum or other coins so this is another reason and then the third one are the utility cases that gonna be built on the blockchain what we do today we are taking the the, the, it's the Muslim or the ethics and values lifestyle from the centralized world to the decentralized world. Why? Because that's the best to serve it to the blockchain because that's the best technology that matches it. Today, people talking about transparency. 
about balancing the deals, about eliminating uh, intermediators. And that's all within the principles of Sharia finance. So this, there is a reason for people to do it. So Islamic coin is the native coin of Hak chain, but let's say there are some projects on Hak chain, like for example, we talk about Zakat, mm -hmm. and blockchain is the best to distribute Zakat in a very transparent way. You have- Secure way, yes. yes. So you, community can see the wallet where Zakat funds are using and see the other wallets that how Zakat is distributed and that wallets can be connected with a digital identity or know the people names and many other projects like Musharaka, Mudaraba, Murabaha, whatever you talk, even talk about inheritance. Inheritance, a lot of people, they don't know that in Islamic finance, everything is there in details. So we can just deploy the formula of the inheritance in a smart contract. And a lot of cases that's happening in real life will disappear where people go to the court fighting about their part of the inheritance. When this is happening through smart contracts, there is nothing like this. I mean, it's one of the best solutions. So people, when they go there, at the end of the day, the tool to get this transaction happen is the Islamic coin. Maybe Andre can put some insights more in the technology sites and the utility he's building great things and i would love to get your permission that he explain the sharia oracle because it is something really great he built on the blockchain exactly andre please <laughs> first of all little little introduction about yourself okay. and then let's let's deep deep dive into these topics thank you thank you everyone for coming uh, i'm in blockchain space for 10 years I was initially just curious developer, then I thought that the, uh, uh, that blockchain has a chance to be adopted first in enterprise and government. So I was chasing this path. I was very wrong, <laughs> <laughs> but in public space, I never understood the way which blockchain community, Web3 community is directed to. Uh, I see that Web3 community is kind of isolated on itself. It's Web3 folks are, bu are building for other Web3 folks. We forgot about just regular people outside of uh, Web3 bubble. So I never saw solid reason to join like public blockchain movement. So I kept uh, being involved in blockchain as a hobby. Uh, but uh, three years ago, I moved to Dubai, uh, got introduced to Islamic finance, and with other co-founders by that time, we've been thinking about uh, building some kind of ethical framework which will incentivize builders to build something not just ethical, but meaningful, which bring value to real people. By that time, we did not think about, uh, about Islamic angle, but thanks to living in Dubai, we suddenly understood that this framework, framework already exists and works for a lot of time, especially uh, and it's already implemented in uh, traditional finance, in Islamic banks and other Islamic institutions. So we just understood that uh, we just need to get to, to, to see what banks did 40, uh, 50 years ago and re-implement the same on blockchain uh, without forgetting the initial idea and focus. Web3 community is still very important for us. But our primary focus is to serve general Muslim population, which is currently untapped by uh, blockchain market. But most importantly, their problem is I like I like to speak in Indonesia here, about Indonesia here. In Indonesia, it's around uh, 20 hundred million people there. Uh, something about 60 percent of people there are unbanked and underserved. They don't have uh, cards, uh, I mean credit cards or debit cards, they don't have a laptop. The only thing they have is a mobile device through which they are connected to the financial world and this uh, financial connection is uh, pretty messy. They, uh, they wish to use the banking or financial uh, services but they cannot uh, to do so. And banks 
are struggling to reach this audience. So it's, uh, they want to meet each other, but they, they can't. And we believe that blockchain can help here. We are not crypto anarchists. We work closely with the uh, financial institutions. We really believe that uh, blockchain technology can help traditional financial institutions to be connected to uh, people who underserved. So is this how then the, I, I get it now, this is like how, first of all, you analyzed and you saw in different countries, you have different circumstances. Yeah. Okay, I explained now with Indonesia. And then when, when does this hack network, how does this idea come from, like the product strategy and then also like the hack Oracle, was it right? Yeah. Sharia Oracle. Yeah. Just coming to this. Yeah. So we understood the target market, we understood the problems, now uh, the solution. Yeah, first we built a network, which is a proof of stake network, EVM compatible, so we are very friendly to the existing ecosystem and the community of uh, builders. Uh, we acquired the FATWA, which states that network, hack network, it's currency, Islamic coins, the economics, and everything, everything else is Sharia compliant. But it's not, it's not enough. We are building an ecosystem. So we need to come up with a framework which, uh, from one side, ensure every user that whatever service they consume or use on hack network is Sharia compliant. And from the other, other side, for builders or financial institutions, a, pro uh, a process to acquire such proof that they are Sharia compliant. That's how we came up to the Sharia Oracle idea. Uh, it will be implemented on testnet in quarter four this year, on mainnet quarter one next year. It's an on-chain DAO which, uh, which has two levels of approvals on every smart contract. You deploy, you can deploy any smart contract on, on Hack Network. It's permissionless, like Ethereum or Polygon. But our users usually communicate to Hack Network through our wallet, which is integrated with Sharia Oracle. Thanks to this, um, uh, users have an option to set a preferred level of approval, either community approval or Sharia approval. Depending on this, they see. Uh, list of services, either community approved or community and Sharia approved. But most importantly, whenever they sign a transaction, our signing engine checks whether the transaction interacts with a smart contract mm -hmm. below the preferred level of approval. If, and if there is such smart contract, we warn a user. We don't prevent, the, prevent him from signing, but at least he is warned. What is community and Sharia approval? Community approval is just an um, initial filter, community-based. So smart contract builders, they submit governance proposal and community of Islamic coin stakers vote for or against it. If they voted yes, then smart contract gets a sole bond token, mm -hmm. which is then signals our wallet to show it as a community approval. Next step is to apply to Sharia approval, which is kind of token um, um, blockchainized process of acquired uh, tokenized Sharia compliance certificates. So when you apply to Sharia approval, our Sharia board starts, um, starts Sharia compliance audits, provides feedback, consults you, you fix issues if any, and when everything is good, our Sharia board issues another Solbond token, which is digital Sharia compliance certificate. Uh, by that point, smart contract and the service around it is seen to everyone in Hack Wallet. And most importantly, every, anyone can uh, sign a transaction without any warning. And this design has very interesting security and technical implication. Some of you may have heard how Curve was hacked 
not recently, but uh, uh, nine months ago, when they, uh, they when uh, attackers they hijacked not not the smart contract but the front end, so that they targeted end users to malicious smart contract, another smart contract. In our network, this kind of attack is still possible, but uh, the amount of affected users will be much less because. Uh, whenever the ha this hack happens, every user will get this warning. So at least they have a second chance to rethink this. Perfect technical details. <laughs> now explain us the hack oracle. What is this all about? Yeah, we, we spoke about Sharia oracle, which yeah. uh, Andre just yeah. explained. Yeah. That's the process that he said it's two stages where the okay. community will vote and then it will go for the Sharia board scanning. So that's what I mean by right. uh, Sharia Oracle. Well, two in one. Good. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then, Mohammed, let's let's go back to your um, vision. You know about Islamic Coin, and um, first of all, can you give us a feedback about how the community adapts, accepts this? Yeah, um, we were actually uh, surprised. I mean, the the community reaction for the project was really beyond our expectations. I mean. Today I was, as just said, we were reviewing the downloads of Hack Wallet and we found it has already reached a million downloads. So it's something really right. impressive. It shows how much, I mean, or, or how huge thirst there within the world community, I will not say only the Muslim community, for ethics and values. Today, we live in an era where people just think on how to make profit, how to make money. Nobody is thinking how to balance this, how to balance this when it reflects to the community. Now, today, if we take it in, in, in from logical point of view, how, why the Sharia finance prohibited uh, interest? Like somebody came to you that he's suffering, he needs a loan, he needs money, he doesn't have it and you squeeze him more and you say i'll give you the money but you keep paying me interest every month doesn't make sense mm -hmm. and if you went back again to 2008 what happened there people getting buying assets on a loan basis and the banks will give just loans without any enough guarantees and people take the loan so the people the, the party who are selling the asset they are selling it with appreciated value more than the real one and the people reach a point they cannot pay the installments because of the heavy interest rates they are getting and then how to solve this they want back they wanted to sell the asset the asset value is very low so the bank cannot cover the money the people cannot pay the rent the asset value of the real estate is going down then crisis happening this is all because of the greed of charging interest that's why we say islamic finance it puts the community first mm -hmm. and that's why the adoption we are seeing for for the project from all over the world muslims and non-muslims we see in twitter like more than 1.2 followers in the discord in telegram total is 1.7 that's a huge adoption people who downloaded the wallets and still the coin is not listed yet in the market you exactly. see how they are passionate and how they are waiting carefully to for for this project to be there and they can start utilizing it and more and more use cases will come in place so adoption is really going beyond expectation and we think it will keep growing and growing and to be honest if you notice history wise there is no Islamic financial entity that I remember that really did the Sharia uh, principles in a right way and filed a bankruptcy. You cannot name any Islamic bank, for example, that filed a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there is a solid structure there and there is a strong adoption from the community. Now, how if you provide same services, but with a better technology, with more transparency, with a community governance, that's really something reflecting amazing with huge adoption. And I would like to highlight here, people think about Islamic finance, yes, but that's not all what our project is about. Also, we talk about social media on Web3 that's 
compatible with Sharia ethics and values. We talk about gaming that's co that are compatible with Sharia ethics and values. We talk about education and awareness, where we created the Blockchain Academy, where the whole community, the whole people who want to learn about blockchain, crypto, Sharia finance, they can go there, they can use the content, understand and learn. And also we have partnered with the International Islamic University in Malaysia, we have partnered also with another uh, well-reputed uh, financial institutions and other universities also. So when they go there, they study for free and they get certificates accredited from very esteemed universities. And that's how we, we work to raise the awareness. And that also reflect in a way or another with more adoption to the project. That sounds really amazing and exciting. Yeah. So Paula, still Islamic uh, finance and blockchain, can you explain us in which particular areas Islamic finance blockchain may be utilized? Definitely. Well, again, I think that Mohammed covered like most okay, of yes. it. <laughs> and we're in the last five minutes, so I'm not going to go into much detail. But basically, uh, I believe that blockchain is the infrastructure that is needed to be used to increase the efficiency, which sounds as a bit of a cliche, but that, that, that's the bare truth. And this works greatly in the traditional sector and it works even better in Islamic finance. Mm -hmm. So the, the applications are multiple, like here I'm talking about blockchain, not tokenizing, tokenization yet. I think that uh, almost in um, every sector, like um, for example, microfinancing peer-to-peer -peer is incredible, uh, incredible application of blockchain, right? There, there are many of those type of platforms and just adding the blockchain layer on top of it makes so much sense. Uh, I think that um, Mohammed already mentioned Zakat, that's another one that, is, uh, that can highly benefit from the transparency of blockchain. And when it comes to tokenization of assets, obviously um, this is something that would bring liquidity to any asset class. And I think that here there are many Sukuks also, like smaller issuances of Sukuks that can highly benefit of that type of tokenization or any platform that can provide access to such products. because. For, for, for those of you who doesn't know, um, there, is a lim uh, there is a minimum amount that you can purchase of the Sukuk. So if you're not an investor that has, let's say, $100,000 and above, you probably cannot purchase. Or even if you have more, you cannot achieve diversification. So I truly see like the very high benefit there of tokenizing those type of Islamic assets. Then the last point, uh, how blockchain fits so well into the space is that Islamic finance is based on contracts, contractual relationships. And I think that's the very best use case for smart contracts to have things executed automatically. So then you completely ensure the fairness and the transparency and uh, the contracts being ethic. Last words you want to say to the audience when we round up? Yeah, but um, I mean, first of all, uh, I want to thank I mean, the audiences, we've been in many events, but I see people really sitting till end of the day, which is something highly appreciated. I want to say also thank you, Julie, for the smart questions. Uh, Paula, amazing input also. She talked about the Sukuk, and that's something I missed to highlight, which is really going to be something big on uh, Web3. And uh, we really, me and uh, Andre, uh, enjoyed uh, a lot uh, in Turkey and Istanbul. There is a good roadmap and something we are planning to do here. And there are a lot of surprises coming soon for Islamic coin and Hakchain. So please stay tuned and uh, follow the project. And we together, me, Andre, the co-founders, the team and the community, we together success. We cannot success alone. We're still serving the community and need the community support to be always there and to be a sustainable project. So that, that means we have to say, Ahan, that the next uh, blockchain conference will be in Dubai, probably, <laughs> or Abu Dhabi. <laughs> there are a lot there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paula, Andre, okay. and Mohammed. Thank you guys Thank so, you much everyone. Thanks so much for listening. It was such a pleasant uh, talk. And like I said, after you're here today and also tomorrow, so everybody can approach you still and to have a chit chat. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.